So let's go ahead and talk about taking this apart because I need to check this DC jacked. This is a Dell Inspiron 15. And customer brought it in. It is not running correctly, to say the least. But also, it is. It tries to get to the login screen and that shuts off. And I think it's because it's the battery isn't isn't actually being charged uh, like enough. So we're gonna take it apart. We're gonna take a look at the DC jack, make sure DC voltage is getting getting to where it needs to go. And yes, charger ID is annoying. So we have on the bottom, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 screws and the keyboard comes off. Make sure you don't put the wrong screws in the wrong place. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If you like these videos, make sure you hit the like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. It really, really helps the channel. All these screws out. All these screws appear to be the same length, so keeping them organized isn't a huge issue. So just make sure you do keep them situated. together you know where these yawns are coming from and then one in the battery tray we have three screws underneath here so you're gonna need a little bit smaller smaller tip and then under here we're gonna need to remove the keyboard Two, three, four, five. Just a simple little flat tool. Push along little clips. It'll lift up. And now we're going to remove the keyboard. And under the keyboard, we have one, two, three, four, five screws and a few ribbon cables. One, two, three, four, five. And then we just peel the bottom off. Just that easy. Now, once you get inside, we have our hard drive over here, which I believe... It's like a regular old spinning disc in there. We have a, an actual damaged hinge over here, so we have to be careful with that. This side is good, this side is damaged. We have our CPU, CPU cooler, memory. Get that screw out. A great sun. But this is a cable DC jack. Looks like it should be fine. We can't figure out why we're not getting consistent power. Thought uh, that maybe this pin was broken, but it looks fine. Put these screws back in temporarily. Put all the screws back in temporarily for the hinges so that we can open this thing up without damaging it. Nothing there on that one. Okay. Press it over. We need to reconnect our power button. If you're just replacing something like a hard drive or you're adding memory to these computers, you don't have to worry about undoing these ribbon cables. Only reason you really would need to worry about the ribbon cable would be if you're in a situation where you need to remove the motherboard. Rack pad. Like, and I can't hook up the keyboard right now. Let's see what happens here. Seems to be working okay right now. Huh. 
So I'm wondering if the problem that we're having with this computer is caused entirely by the battery. It's not overheating. It is the fan is actually spinning. But as soon as I plug the battery in, it turned itself off. I'm remembering now he mentioned he disabled the owner disabled the keyboard or the mouse, excuse me. It will if it doesn't have a battery. This is still not running great. Yeah, it is. It, like, if it doesn't require the charge circuit, it would just bypass it. Now, the reason it's a slow Dell is because of that. No, and it's uh, this is an actual genuine Dell charger. So it's not an unknown. It's just an old, old computer. I think this is what? Celeron? Oh, it's an i5. It's a fourth gen i5. Yeah, so this disc is hitting 100%. So let's check how, like, once we got to wait for this thing to to spin itself down a little bit. And then once it spins down, we should be able to, we should be able to check the power settings. All right, let's turn this on. without the battery, try and get into the BIOS. Cause I'm curious if under power, if it's set wake on AC, USB support, advanced charge. No, nothing like that. So in the BIOS, let's see if it does the same thing in the BIOS. So it's gotta be that windows battery is in currently. It's gotta be something in windows then. Yeah, it's gotta be something in windows that's doing it then. I don't have an option other than can't turn it off. It should be like nothing here. Do nothing. So now I plug this in. Nothing should happen. Hey, look at that. Nothing happened. Perfect. Yeah, I'd say like if he wants to keep using this thing, he needs to replace the battery. Other than that, oh, this is what, fifth gen? Yeah. Yeah, fifth gen i5. So at this point, he needs a new battery. He needs an SSD. Everything else on it seems to be fine. So how much are we talking about here? It's 185 or 285 for literally $15 more. He can get a computer that's significantly better that I have here in the office and I can just move his stuff over. See what he wants to do. Hey, all right. So I figured out what's going on with your computer. It was just a setting for the battery. Um, when the battery got battery got critically low, it would just turn the computer off. Um, so, and I went through and I basically added up everything that I would recommend doing. Obviously replacing the battery, uh, replacing the hard drive with an SSD, and then just the actual cost of that. And you'd be right at 285. Um, the other thing is like for literally $15 more, I have a computer here that I could just transfer all your stuff to. And it would be, it has a working battery and it's a more modern computer. So just let me know which way you want to go with that. And then we'll kind of go from there. Yeah. 30 bucks for the battery isn't, isn't bad. The problem is this is, Wait, it was a, like this was a manufactured in uh, 20. So it's 10 years old. Hey, thanks for watching that video. If you liked that video, make sure you hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And I stream daily on Twitch at twitch.tv slash spec vengeance. And uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about my services, check out BradentonPCRepair.com. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.